report to order. I'd like to ask everyone if they would turn their phones on silent or uh, turn them off. Uh, we've got uh, several items on the agenda. We're going to try to get through as quick as possible. Uh, at this time, I would like to ask uh, Pastor uh, Jim Absher if he would uh, say the invocation for us. Merciful and gracious and kind, loving, heavenly Father. Father God, we thank you for another beautiful day. We thank you for the blessing of life. Lord, as we come to you this day, asking you, Lord, to guide us and direct us in every decision that we make and help us, Lord, to do all things uh, uh, to help this county and uh, be pleasing in your sight. Forgive us all of our shortcomings, Lord, and bless us this day. Bless each and every one that's present here today. And bless all new to bind me to pray for. Forgive us when we fail you, O oh God, and go with us and watch over us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Judge Jones. Present. Commissioner Scott. Present. Commissioner Atkins. Present. Commissioner Absher. Present. We have a quorum and we are ready to proceed. I'd like to ask Sheriff Rodney Scott if he would lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Mm. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Sheriff. Next time is the approval of the minutes of the August 6th uh, meeting of the fiscal court. Is there a motion to approve? Motion. Motion by Commissioner Atkins. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Scott. Any questions or discussion? Seeing them, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Atkins? Yes. Commissioner Atkins? Yes. Judge Jones? Yes. Next item is the, uh, I'm going to ask Sheriff Scott, he needs to get out of here pretty quick. Um, this is acknowledgement of receipt of the Pike County Sheriff's 2023 Real Property Tax Settlement and approval for the quietest. Uh, Sheriff, would you please uh, proceed? Thank you, Judge. Uh, yeah, like you said, uh, this is our property tax for 23, and uh, to close it out uh, so we can get our quietest to open our 24 taxes. All right, is there a motion to acknowledge uh, receipt of and approval of the Sheriff's 2023 property tax settlement and approval for Aquatus? Motion. We have a motion by Commissioner Atkins. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Absher. Any question or discussion? Seeing now, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Atkins? Yes. Commissioner Absher? Yes. Judge Jones? Yes. Thank you, Judge. Any other business, Sheriff? That's it. Thank, Thank you, sir. All right, next item is the acknowledgement of receipt of the Pike County Conservation District's, District's annual financial report for July 1st, 2023 and to June 30th, 2024. We have uh, Mr. Charlie Pinson, who's a member of the board, as well as Lisa Birchfield, who's the administrative secretary. Uh, they're here today. Uh, would y'all like to come up and go over this real quick? And We meet every second uh, Thursday of the month at 6 p.m. less otherwise posted. By, and open to the public, we invite you, some, any of the court members, to come to any of our meetings. Uh, all of our programs and events are always posted on our Facebook, so you can follow and like us to keep up with that. We're striving to teach more, reach more students with agriculture and environmental education. We went to the KACD conference in Louisville in July where we received the Outstanding Environmental Education Conservation District for 23-24. Uh, we got program with our county, county cost share. We accept applications year round for lime, fertilizer, hay, pasture, backyard, backyard conservation, which includes pollinator gardens, fruit trees, bat houses, rain barrels, compost bins. We do a 50-50 match. The reimbursement up to $500. Beekeeping includes smokers, extractors, suits, gloves, queen catchers, queen excluders, queen markers, foundation, poly polystyrene hives, woodenware, air fencing feeds, medications, and education grants for teachers and materials for raised garden beds, tools, composters, and towers. Uh, we're trying to help get a Kentucky Cattlemen's Association started here in Pike County. We have our first meeting at the office at August the 28th at 6 p.m. Anybody that wants to come join. Uh, our CAPE applications, which are through the state, 
are open through August the 30th. This program provides producers with cost share assistance on practices to improve and diversify their current operations. It's a reimbursement program with 11 different investment areas, ag diversification, large animal, small animal, farm infrastructure, forage and grain, fencing and on water farm, and innovative ag systems, poultry and other fowl. On farm energy, ag tech, and leadership development, uh, value added and marketing. These investment areas have different reimbursement scales, can be anywhere from 25 to 75%. You would need a farm number and an ag water quality plan to qualify, which we can help you get those up there. We're going to, again, with the, with the help of the county, we'll be having our annual appliance buyback in October. We'll buy stoves, refrigerators, washers, dryers, dishwashers, microwaves, deep freezes, air conditioners, heat pumps, and hot water tanks. We'll pay $15 for large items, $7.50 for medium items, and $5 for small items. Fund for this program comes from our millage tax money, and we'll be paying out $3,000 a day this year uh, at each of the five locations. On October 7th, we'll be at Robinson Creek Road Lot. The 8th will be at the Belcher Road Lot. The 9th will be at Phelps Road Lot. And on the 10th, we'll be at the Johns Creek Re Recycling Center. On the 11th, we'll be at the Belfry Road Lot. And uh, Lisa's going to talk to you about some new stuff we're going to be doing. Okay. For the first time this year, we are planning an Ag Day event on October the 12th in collaboration with the Farmers Market to celebrate National Farmers Day. So we're real excited about this and we want to hold maybe some kind of like county fair events. So we're going to be having a bake off and it will be for, for children uh, along with adults a chili cook-off, a corn eating contest, some sack races, some other games and stuff for kids, and there'll be live music throughout the day on that. So we hope everybody comes out and join us and help us celebrate National Farmers Day. Our junior board is getting ready for our back to school kickoff. off uh, Our junior board is for kids seventh to 12th grade, and it's a great opportunity for kids to form friendships. They help create and implement local conservation projects. They get experience holding meetings, they learn to work as a team, and they learn a lot of public speaking at our uh, Ag Day events and uh, just with our Camp Day events and things. They earn their volunteer hours, which looks great on college and job applications. And our seniors that have been members of our junior board for two or more years get a $250 scholarship and a graduation cord. They meet on every Wednesday at 3.30 at the office, and these meetings are subject to change according to the kids' schedule. Uh, all dates and can be found on our Facebook page. So our back to school kickoff will be August the 28th at 3.30 to 5. Our new members are always welcome. Students can come out and join us for some food and fun and games and learn about what our junior board does. Some of the activities our junior board does is we always collect wands for wildlife. It's to make scary wands. And we uh, have two different uh, organizations that we send those to. So people, when you get rid of your mascara wands, just clean them up good with Dawn and drop them off to the office to us and we'll take care of that. They always participate in the trunk or treat activities at Pite Central. You also do it at the farmer's market on that night. We get involved in a lot of community service projects and we do our camp day events. And this year, for the first time, we held a community scavenger hunt at Coran Park. Do they have any questions for us? So we have the dates, it looks like, for the appliance buyback. Is that correct? Yes. And um, I just want to mention those because that is, to me, an important thing. Every time that we have a uh, flood event, we have numerous appliances that turn up in drains. Um, and I tell this story that uh, former Deputy Judge Reggie Hickman and I were down on Lower Big Creek after one of the flood events down there. And there was a washing machine up in a tree. I mean, and I don't know how you, I don't know how you could even get it down. It was, first we couldn't believe the water got that high, but second it was a, a washing machine sitting up in a tree. And, you know, there's no excuse for those kind of appliances because, uh, you know, even up on my house on Left Fork Island Creek, we had, uh, water got up last year, we had a deep freeze that washed up in the drain. And, you know, I had to pay somebody to go in there and, and get it out. Um, you know, particularly there's no excuse when we have a solid waste program that will pick them up at no cost. 
or you can take them to the appliance buyback and get money for it. So I do want to just mention that briefly. Um, uh, the, the appliance buyback for 2024, Pike County residents only, will be $15 for a large item, $7.50 for a medium item, and $5 for a small item. Uh, it will be during the week of October 7th to the 11th, October 7th at Robinson Creek Solid Waste Lot, October 8th at the Belcher Lot, October 9th at the Phelps Road Lot, October 10th at the Johnson Creek Recycling Center, and October 11th at the Belfry Road Lot. And if anybody has any questions, they can uh, call the Conservation District at 432-4695 or Pike County Solid Waste at 432-6245. And I'm going to say this, Lisa, Charlie, I appreciate what you all do because the conservation district is maybe one of the, the most underutilized resources that we have for economic development. Um, the one area where Pike County has always lagged behind is, you know, everybody's coal, 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 but we've got opportunities for agriculture here in this county. There are, like the Cattlemen's Association, um, there's a lot of property on these mountaintop removal sites that are really suited for uh, cattle farming. And you've got people like, you know, Gerald Fields is, is doing that over on Brush. And you've got a lot of people who are starting to get into it. Um, and you've had people who've done it for years. Uh, but we need to focus more on the agriculture opportunities that we have here. And I think that that's something that we've missed out on. But I think Conservation District can play a large role in that. There's, there's a lot of different things on the reclamation side of that. You know, there's, there's a big farm down in Hazard that they took a big uh, mountaintop removal down there and they were able to reclaim that into a farm. They won several uh, awards for that farm down there. And so, you know, I don't know, I know most of our reclamation now is kind of probably past that, but still, you're right, you know. And, you know, think about it, sheep and goats. You realize that one of the largest population growing in this country are the uh, uh, Hispanics and and the people from you know Western Europe and over through there they eat a lot of goat so this is perfect terrain for goat and and sheep you know because they, they can even if the hills are not flat like cattle would like them they can go on just about anything and you know and then on the second thing about that is you turn loose on a strip job they'll they'll clean it up for you and you if we could bring in one of my favorite things. There, there's a way you do. You bring in pigs first, and they'll come in. They'll clean everything off. And it'll be then you bring in the goats, and then when you bring in the cattle, you've got a beautiful piece of property, and it's all grass because they peel, they they've allowed you to completely re redo all that without having to bring in heavy machinery or anything like that. You can just do it with animals. And, and you know, um, one of the things that I also wanted to mention is the Clean Pike County Board. I guess it used to be referred to as the Pride Board. Um, I would like to see the Conservation District working closely with the Clean Pike County Board because your, your goals are the same. And a lot of what you're trying to accomplish and a lot of what the Clean Pike County Board is trying to accomplish um, is going to start with educating our kids. And the Conservation District has a long history of outreach into our schools. And I don't think that we necessarily need to reinvent the wheel in terms of education because we've got the Conservation District. But I think there's a lot of room for cooperation between the Conservation District and the Clean Pike County Board. Um, you've got um, uh, a lot of people who volunteered over the years Marie Childers, Teddy Honeaker, Jimmy Dale Sanders. You've got a lot of people who've worked for years and they've passed that torch on um, to, to new folks now. But we need to continue that work. But I think I would like for you all, and Jeannie can let you all know when the next meeting of the Clean Pike County Board is, they do it here in the courtroom. Uh, and see if you all could be here, have representatives here, so where there might be some cooperation uh, where you all could collaborate on some things. I mean, you know, we're, uh, I know that they've worked on the tire program. Um, you know, we'll have somebody from Solid Waste there. But I think we need to put, pool our resources and, 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 and make sure we're not trying to duplicate efforts, but see if there's some ways to cooperate. And, I have the agenda for the meeting. 
Last few months. We've actually had the Queen Water Board come and attend some of our meetings, several of their mm -hmm. members. So we've been making an effort to work together to do that. And, you know, we would love to find a way to clean some more of the tires up here if we could find some grants for that. Well, I've, I've been talking to Pete Runyon. They have, the friends of Tug Fork, they yes. have gotten thousands of tires out of the Tug. And um, we need, in my opinion, that's, that to me is a major, major project. Okay. And it's going to take some time to do it because it's, it's a manpower intensive, labor intensive, and it's expensive. But we also, I think, need to be focusing on the education piece because it's hard for me to understand why when we have the best solid waste system anywhere at, at a reasonable price, we still have people, you know, throwing garbage in the creeks or over the hill. It, it just doesn't make sense. And, well, you know, there's no reason if you have your tires changed, that, you know, there's a, there's a fee to take care of those old tires. And I don't know where, the, where the, you know, I guess people are doing their own is what's happening. You know, Charlie, most of the tires that are in the rivers probably have been there for decades, um, but we still catch people illegally dumping tires. We caught one up at Elkhorn City a year or so ago that was going up on county property at, uh, at, uh, at uh, Beaver and dumping a truckload of tires out. Um, so, I mean, it's still happening, and there's no reason for it. Um, but... Uh, Lisa, appreciate you, and we just hope that you all can find a way to work with the Clean Pike County Board. Uh, Chuck usually is at those meetings on behalf of the court. And, um, you know, we before I leave office, I would like to see some type of comprehensive education uh, program put in our schools. And I think that needs to be done. And I, don't, I think um, when I was in school growing up, you probably have more of an emphasis on it than you do now. But but we do need, I think that's where it has to start. I think we have to start educating these kids. It's not okay to roll the window down, throw something out, or take a load of garbage out and dump it in the creek or over the hill. Uh, we're never going to change the image of eastern Kentucky until that's done, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. Y'all can chime in if you want to on that we were working on another program to bring an extra educator in to help us, so we've already approved uh, opening that dialogue up with a group that's going to bring in educators, and we'll, we're going to help pay for them to be here. I think that's a huge piece of it right there. I get out to what school I can, but it's just hard for one person to get up and keep everything up in the office, too. <laughs> and, and, and that's the biggest problem is lack of resources, because it's a big, a big county. There's a lot of schools. And it's a big problem because, you know, when I came in as judge, they didn't even have a solid waste enforcement officer. We've got two now. And, you know, we don't want, we don't want to put people in jail. We don't want people to get cited and get dragged to court. But we also don't want people throwing their garbage in the creeks or over here. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, sometimes people have to learn that the hard way. But what we've been trying to do is if we catch people dumping, is like, clean it up. We don't want to prosecute you. All we want you to do is clean it up and not do it again. And, uh, you know, and even people who are behind on their garbage bills, we still pick the garbage up because we don't want it dumped illegally. We'd rather pick it up, try to collect the money, than, than having, uh, having it dumped illegally. So, yeah. But the garbage uh, collecting, the way they do, there's no excuse for that. There's no excuse for it, and unfortunately, though, it still happens. Yeah. Ron, do you have something you want to add? <laughs> no, I just think that, uh, you know, everybody is working hard to try to clean up this litter, you know, and uh, I probably said something one time years ago. I said, well, we go pick it up, and they throw it out as fast as you, thought, as you pick it up. And, you know, I, I really think if we didn't pick it up, what would we do? So I think it's a big issue that uh, we need to try to clean the county up because solid waste does a good job. They'll come right to you garbage and they'll pick every piece of it up for you, you know. And there's no excuse for going through a bypass or an off ramp where nobody can see you and throw that McDonald bags and then Burger King bags and that salt. That stuff is everywhere. That, that's uncalled for. 
you know. You and, know, uh, we've had litter abatement crew just, I know, probably last couple of weeks picked up the garbage on Island Creek. And unfortunately, two weeks after they pick it up, it looks just like it did. And, I mean, it's in, there, there's no excuse for it. For instance, Judge, uh, I know this happened uh, in, uh, this happened in Tennessee. This guy threw a cigarette butt out the window. They took him to court and found him for a cigarette butt. That's, that's true. Yeah, I mean, if you do, if you threw out garbage over the hill or in the creek in Tennessee or Virginia, like people <coughs> do here, uh, you'd probably find yourself looking at bars, mm -hmm. particularly in Virginia. I'd say you'd probably be, mm -hmm. you know, they don't have much sense of humor over there. They would not. They would not tolerate that. Well. No. So, and we shouldn't tolerate it here either because it hurts property values. It hurts economic development. It hurts tourism. You know, Jerry Atkins and the folks on the trail advisory board have worked for years trying to get this trail system started, and it's it's hard to develop tourism when people you know people don't want to come here and, and ride trails that are covered with litter. They don't want to see that when they're coming here. They don't want to see it when they get here. So, <coughs> but I appreciate y'all, Charlie. At least appreciate y'all very much. All right. Thank so, you. anybody have any questions about their uh, financial report? <coughs> that being said, I will make a motion to uh, acknowledge uh, receipt of the Pike County Conservation District's annual financial report. Um, is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Scott. Any questions or discussion? Seeing now, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Atkins? Yes. Commissioner Absher? Yes. Judge Jump? Yes. Thank you all very much. Thank you, guys. Next item is acknowledgement of receipt of the Pike County Board of Health tax rate for 2024. It is the same as last year, no change. Is, is there a motion to acknowledge receipt? Motion. Motion by uh, Commissioner Atkins. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Scott. Any questions or discussion? Seeing that, please call the roll. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Atkins? Yes. Commissioner Absher? Yes. Judge Jump? Yes. All right. Next item is authorization to submit a letter of intent to CSX Surface Transportation Board for obtaining 5.1 miles of abandoned trail in Pike County. Sharon, can you come up and talk to this uh, and give us some information? Because we've had some local folks who <coughs> would like to um, develop a bike trail, pedestrian trail here. They've done this, I guess, in maybe Floyd County and Johnson County. And the question is, um, as I understand it, it was relayed to us that this would basically be at no cost. Is that correct? Right. That's I think we were all under that understanding that they just donate that, which they probably should, but no, you got to buy it. And they put an appraisal value on it. It's usually pretty high. Yeah, the 10 miles of trail in Prestonsburg that they ended up with, was it 240000 Is it what they... Oh, no, the railroad put a value of 700000 on that 10-mile section. And, of course, the city of Prestonsburg said there's no way, and they did their own appraisal, which was 240000 Now, I didn't get the final price that they agreed upon, and it's, still, it's probably still held. It's called uh, banking, that railroad section. It's probably still held in banking because I don't think that passage is completed yet. They'll let you put it in a conservancy where you hold it for, like, six months at a time, automatically renew it until you can get grant funding. But you do have to buy that, and then you probably will put in another million dollars in, because there's certain requirements how you do that railroad bid. When you pull up the ties, the metal. So the county would have to pay for that? Oh yeah, unless we could get grant funding. If they would let us hold it until we can come up with the money, well, that would be mean, the only option. The county, <coughs> in my opinion, and, and I, I want to just, because you know, this was on Facebook, and I've had two or three people call me about it, and, Oh, you can get this property for free and no. all this railroad. There's a program. <laughs> That's not true. The county no. has to pay for the property. I'd say that'll be a half a million dollars. And then you have to develop the trail. And without grant money, 
I mean, we've already, you know, let me say this. We got the, the, the uh, we bought the property at uh, Flatwoods for Two seventy five. Two hundred seventy five thousand. We ended up with what, how many acres? Twenty. It's like fifty two hundred acres because they donated half of it. How, how much? Fifty two hundred. No, we don't. Part of that's leased. Jerry, what is it? Twenty. Twenty five hundred thirty five. It's twenty five hundred thirty five acres that we purchased, but then the other half wasn't leased. It was donated, no, wasn't it? No, twenty. No, it was the, the part we the county owns is twenty five hundred thirty five <coughs> acres. Part of that was the big sandy lease. Right. <laughs> 2,600 was leased, mm -hmm. but the county ended up with 2,500 acres for 275,000. And my position on that was the county is never going to lose money. I mean, the county could decide if, if the trail system doesn't make it, if it doesn't have the, you know, if, if future courts think we can't continue this, there are people right now that would give you, the county could auction that property off and make a bunch of money on it, I think. Do you agree with that, Jerry? <clears throat> and um, the difference is developing the trail, this railroad trail. If you buy, if you spent three or four or five hundred thousand dollars on a railroad bed, it's not going to have any value for anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're not going to be able to use it for any kind of economic de <coughs> development. It's not going to have any ability to count. No, it has to, to be used specifically for that. And you have to grade it with. You have to either pave it or dense grade. It has to be leveled off. There's a lot of requirements, but you've got to go by their requirements, and it can't be used for anything else but a walk trail or horse trail. Yeah, and I just don't see how the or county could put the sorry, money, put that kind of money into it. And, and I think that's the difference between the, the the hillbilly trail system is the property was. You know, with how much property we got for that amount of money, right. the county could make money by selling it if we had to. I don't think that right now the county could justify hundreds of thousands of dollars in a bike trip. Now, well, that would be a five year project at least, and you'd be putting that encumbrance on the next judge. Yeah, or and, and I think if, if we could look at a way to mm -hmm. apply for some grant money to develop it and acquire it. I would support that. And then maintenance. Yeah, I mean, I, would, I wouldn't have a, I mean, I don't see there be a tremendous amount of maintenance to it because you could use jail staff to weed it around and that kind of stuff. Right. Or the, or the inmates, I should say. But you can't justify the cost when it can only be used for a bike trail or pedestrian trail under the county's current It doesn't funding. generate revenue to keep it up, yeah. which I know we could use inmates and litter abatement crews, but still, I mean, it's a great thing, public health issue, whatever, but who's got a couple million dollars? You're going to have to have grant funding to do it. That's what I'm saying. Can you look mm -hmm. at what grant funding might be available? I don't have a problem making a motion myself to look to apply for grant money. But I don't think, and it goes back to what I said in the newspaper a couple weeks ago that some people got offended by, is the county is going to, in the future, is going to have to make some hard choices. You have all this infrastructure that they built with coal severance tax, and now you don't have the coal severance tax to maintain it. And it was pretty funny because you had people going on there saying, oh, they're building a golf course. They're opening a golf course. Up. Well, no, the county's not spending one penny of taxpayer money on a golf course. Uh, that's all private investment. Um, you had other people say, well, they bought garbage trucks, and you're talking about having to make cuts. You know, you, you don't pick up 850,000 pickups a year in wheelbarrows. Uh, you know, I mean, you have to have trucks to pick garbage up. Unfortunately, that costs money. I, you know, I wish it was easy as I wish it was as easy as, as not having to buy them, but you do, and I don't think people realize what the priorities of the county have to be. I mean, the first thing you have to take care of is the roads. Mm -hmm. You have to pick up garbage for what seventeen thousand residential and commercial customers, roughly, Chuck. Mm -hmm. So if you multiply seventeen thousand times fifty pickups a week for fifty-two weeks a year. I think it's 844,000, roughly 850,000 garbage pickups a year is how many the Pike County solid waste makes. I don't think people realize that. 
spread out over 888 square miles of territory. Um, we have to figure out what the priorities are, and I would love to have a bike trail, but right now, unless we can find grant funding for it, I don't think that it's possible to do no. that. Um, I mean, anybody can do this letter of intent. I mean, and there'll probably be more people than us, maybe, if they've got the money to do it. I mean, somebody may buy it. May buy it and pull up the tracks and pull up the uh, ties and sell them and do something else with it. They're gonna look at all these proposals because once you do the letter of intent, and they may get multiple ones, they're gonna look at the proposal of what you're gonna do with it. If nobody does it, you know, whoever does the letter of intent and says, no, I just want that to, I don't know, do something else. I don't know what else you could do with it. But I know other people, private individuals that have bought the, and sold the track, you know, sold the ties and all that stuff. But, but you're not, you're not gonna it. recoup enough money I mean, you're talking a big project when right. you start taking rail up and you start taking railroad ties up. Uh, that's a big project, and I don't know if the money, I mean, I don't say how you'd make enough money to cover the cost of it. Well, I don't think you can ever make money on it because that would just be public use. It wouldn't even be like a community center or the, you know, permits on a trail because most of those bike trails, I think it's just free public use. But you have to, what you're saying is you do a letter of intent, but that doesn't obligate. <laughs> that doesn't even say we'll even get it. The next step would be to do a proposal of what you wanted to do with it. But right now, the letter of intent <laughs> is because they advertised on July the 11th that it would be available when, they, when something, they're going to abandon something. And then the next step is the letter of intent that you want it or want to do something with it. Then the next step after that would be to do a proposal. Well, I mean, you know, let's just be honest about and this. And then it would have to sit until you got grant money. <laughs> well, I mean, you know. I, I don't mean, know how long they'd give you. I'm not so sure what federal law, and this is something Roy would have to look at, because the railroads are federal regulated. They're regulated by the federal government, but I'm not sure if a county could even condemn uh, abandoned rail lines. I mean, that's an option. is always eminent domain if you, but, you know, if it, but at the end of the day, you still have to take all the trail up, or all the track up, and you all the railroad. You still got to do ties. that construction, yes. It five, is a lot. I mean, five miles would be of, of pavement on a uh, mm -hmm. bike trail would not be cheap. I'm thinking, right now in today's prices, you're talking a million dollars just to get a trail the way it needs to be. Yeah, Sharon, just, correct me if I'm wrong, but as well as buying it from the railroad. Some of this railroad property, when they bought it, That's when right. railroad's done, it reverts back to the land. Absolutely, right have to now go we don't see know. Through all that as well. Yeah, no, I just don't. I don't. There's see only, only been one family concerned about it and said, "No, that reverts back to us if it's not used for a rail, railroad anymore." If you get into, the, I don't even know how many people. I just know of one family that's already made an issue out of it. But how many would they be, you know, when the railroad was buying property years ago and said it would revert back if it's not a railroad no, anymore? I mean, don't we know. don't have the manpower or money to do this right now, I don't think. Would you all have any, anybody wants to do the letter of intent or you all in agreement? I, I'm like you. I don't think, I, I think that's something we could pass because we got more important things than, than that, and that's going to cost the county a whole lot of money right now. I agree, Commissioner. Ronald, you and Bubby agree? I agree with okay. I mean, I'd like to finish the ATV trails, the grants for those. And well, yeah, I mean, you know. The ATV trails are going to generate revenue, right. if not necessarily for the trail system, but for the local businesses. And I don't know that you could say the same about a bike trail. Yeah, I'm not sure what type of economic development. And I love, I mean, I love riding bikes, but, you know, it's just not something that's not The feasible. biggest one, that Dawkins Trail passage that goes through a couple counties, McGoffin County, Johnson County, that was funded by the state of Kentucky. That wasn't grant money. They directly funded that. I did investigate that. They didn't apply. Johnson County didn't apply for this or this or McGoffin County. No, the state of Kentucky funded that directly. Well, maybe we want to reach out to the state and see if they'd be willing to do this one. Yeah. Why don't, we, why don't we do that? Look at, let's look and see which do agency some research funds. On yeah. it. We got to August 30th to do okay. that letter of intent. I mean, we could always come back and do the letter of intent oh, yeah. if we could find state funding that would pay for it, but the county doesn't have the money. So. If we are going to do the letter of intent, it's due by August the 30th, so we would have to make a motion today 
that we would do the letter, but that doesn't mean we have to do anything else. But well, we could do a special. That doesn't we could do a, anything. We could do a special meeting if if you found yes. out there was some state money. Okay. Then we could come back, but until then, I don't think we do that. I agree. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Sharon. You're welcome. All right. Next item is adoption of resolution authorizing the filing of a flood control match program grant in the amount of ninety six thousand seven hundred fifty eight to be used as matching funds for the Levisa Fort Basin. Uh, coal run flood risk management project and approval to execute all documents related to the grant. Sharon, is this money that we're asking DLG for? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, so is there a motion? And this goes, this will be part of the match that the Corps of Engineers, this will be part of the 5% local match that we would be asking the Department of Local Government to help fund. Would there be a motion to adopt the resolution? Motion. Motion by Commissioner Adkins is her second. Second. Second by Commissioner Scott. Any question or discussion? See none. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Adkins? Yes. Commissioner Absher? Yes. Judge Jones? Yes. Next item is an authorization to apply for a 2025 liter abatement program grant and approval to execute all documents related to the grant. Is there a motion to authorize? Motion. Motion by Commissioner Absher. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Adkins. Any questions or discussions? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Adkins? Yes. Commissioner Absher? Yes. Judge Jones? Yes. Next item is approval of lease agreements between the Big Sandy Area Development District and the Pike County Fiscal Court for three delivery vehicles to be used by the Pike County Senior Citizens Program. This was the Fiscal Court uh, working with the Ad District, Eric Ratliff, uh, we owe a tremendous debt of gratitude for helping get this done. Sharon worked on it. Roy, you've reviewed the lease, is that correct? Yes. So there's three vehicles that will be uh, owned by the Ad District. Uh, they will be leased to the county. Um, we will be reimbursing the Ad District for the insurance coverage for the vehicle. Uh, we just basically have to maintain them. Um, maintain a logbook for uh, maintenance and so forth, um, et cetera. Um, 30 days notice to cancel the lease agreement. These are much needed vehicles uh, for the ad, for the uh, senior citizens program. So I would make them, well, is there a motion to approve the lease agreement that Roy, you, you signed off on it, correct? Motion. Motion by Commissioner Atkins is your second. Second. Second by Commissioner Absher. Any questions or discussions? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Atkins? Yes. Commissioner Absher? Yes. Judge Jones? Yes. Next item is authorization to execute a lease for the Shelby Valley Day Center. And this is the daycare center that's uh, at the Shelby Valley um, Besides the Shelby Valley Senior Citizen Center, Roy, you approved the lease. Is that correct? Yes. All right. All right. And the lessor pays six hundred a month in rent. Um, Yeah. All right. Is there a motion to authorize the lease for the Shelby Valley Daycare Center? Motion. Motion by Commissioner Scott. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Atkins. Any questions or discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Atkins? Yes. Commissioner Absher? Yes. Judge Jones? Yes. Next item is uh, just, I received a letter. There was a wet dry petition submitted to Daryl Pugh, uh, and I received a letter dated August 16, 2024. I'd ask that this be made a uh, part of the court's record. Is there, uh, is there a mo I'll make a motion to make it part of the court record. Is there a second on that? Second. Second by Commissioner Adkins. Um, no objections, then, then we'll have that. Uh, is all in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed. All right, so this will be made part of the court record. The petition which was circulated, and this is what it says, 
uh, this is Mr. Miller, I'm not sure who that's addressed to, but the petition that was circulated with the intention of having a wet dry option placed on the Pike County general election ballot has failed. The criteria of 25% of the votes cast in the territory at the last general election was not achieved. Sincerely, Darrell Pugh, Pike County Clerk. So apparently uh, there will not be an order from, the, from my office to put that on the ballot since they did not have the requisite signatures. We wanted to make that part of the official record in case anybody has a question about it, okay? Um, also wanted to, um, to just briefly commend uh, my friend Pete Runyon and the uh, friends of the Tug Fork group. They were named um, Watershed Group of the Year by the Kentucky Waterways Alliance. Uh, and it says that you were chosen because of the compelling nomination statements and your commitment and efforts toward the tenants of the Kentucky Watershed Network, learning, connecting, and collaborating to collectively make great improvements to protect, restore, and celebrate Kentucky's waterways. So uh, I want to just congratulate Pete and all the volunteers, the friends of the Tug Fork, uh, on their hard work to clean up the Tug Fork. And, uh, and uh, they are uh, well deserving of this award. So, anybody like to say anything on that? Appreciate that. So, uh, uh, I, I thought that was something that needed to be mentioned. Yeah. All right. Awarding of bids, Mr. Fenton. We had a bid opening on August 8th, 2024 on bid number 30-2024 for one 2023 renewer 15 passenger van for the detention center. Brian uh, Morris had approached me about three weeks ago uh, talking about a need for a van. He had just signed a uh, federal contract to uh, transport and house federal inmates. These are the most profitable inmates for our jail. They, they uh, pay a lot more money than the state inmates, of course, and of course our local inmates. Uh, uh, I think they pay for per mileage transporting them. Uh, they pay the um, the drivers or the deputies or jailers uh, that do the transport. They pay them up to sixty-five dollars a day to house them, and also any kind of medical, dental, or other expenses that that uh, the inmates occur is paid by the federal, not paid by us. Um, so I did this bid package. There were two bidders. One was Sunnyside Auto of Elwira, Ohio, and one was Walters Mazda. Sunnyside uh, bid $48,190, and Walters Mazda uh, bid $51,850. Um, these are identical vehicles. The Sunnyside van has 6,728 miles on it. And the Walters van has 6,511 miles on it. The van from Sunnyside is a certified pre-owned vehicle, which means that there's a four-year 48,000 mile warranty on it instead of a three-year 36. And it also uh, gives you two free oil changes at any GM dealer. Um, it'd be my recommendation that we award the bid to Sunnyside Auto for a purchase price of $48,190 and authorize the treasurer to issue a check for payment. After we had this bid opening, Brian contacted me again and told me that he had signed a second federal agreement uh, to transport. So he uh, has quite a few. He said that there was 100 right now that he could pick up and house. And but he said to do that, he said, really, I would like, I, I would need two vans. Um, when I write these bid packs for these, I write them uh, with the wording that we're establishing a pricing contract. And in the contract, it says that the contract lasts for a year. So if we award this contract to Sunnyside Auto, then we'll have an annual contract with them. They actually have a second van that's identical to this one that has 23 more hundred miles on it than this one uh, that I can buy for $1,000 less than this one. So, uh, you know, if the court wants to buy the one van from, from Sunnyside Auto, it's $48,190. If they want to buy the second van also from Sunnyside, uh, it would be $47,190 or $95,380 for both vans. 
Uh, Brian said that these two contracts would help this jail generate in excess of a million dollars a year, and he hoped that that would help put the jail in the black. You know, I mean, anything we can do to bring in federal inmates, uh, it cuts down on how much money the county's got to subsidize the jail. And uh, Brian's done a really good job of, uh, of, uh, of increasing the revenue for the jail. If he needs the vans, you know, we've, we've never said no when the sheriff's department's asked for something, and I don't think, you know, this is an agency of county government. Um, he was elected to run the jail, and I defer to him on that. Um, I support buying both vans. We've got, Frankie, we can, we can afford to buy the vans, particularly if it's going to generate revenue. Is that a fair statement? Yeah. I mean, if it generates revenue, you know, you spend money to make money. So, right. um I would be in favor of buying both vans. Is there, so is it the same price, Greg? The first, the first van is $48,190. The second van has 23 more hundred miles on it. It's a thousand dollars less at $47,190. We could buy both vans for $95,380. 95 what? 380. Is there a motion to buy the two vans from Sunnyside, um, Auto in Elyria, Ohio, for the sum of ninety-eight thousand three hundred. No, I'm sorry, ninety-five thousand three hundred eighty dollars. Make motion for payment. And authorization to issue payment for the same. Is there a motion by Commissioner Absher? No. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Commissioner Atkins. Any questions or discussion? Seeing that, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Scott. Yes. Commissioner Atkins. Yes. Commissioner Absher. Yes. Judge Johnson. Yes. Thank you, Judge. That's all I have. All right. Next is the Pike County Road Supervisor's Report. Fabian, you want to come up just in case anybody has anything? I don't have anything. Okay. We've got the completed uh, work orders and the scheduled work orders. Again, the completed work orders will be posted on Pike TV. Uh, is there a motion to approve? Motion. Motion by Commissioner Adkins. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Scott. Any question or discussion? Seeing now, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Atkins? Yes. Commissioner Absher? Yes. Judge Jones? Yes. All right, Treasurer's business, Mr. Stacey. Acknowledge receipt of the Sheriff and Clerk's 2550 report for July 2024. Is there a motion to acknowledge receipt of the Sheriff and Clerk's 2550 reports? Motion. Uh, motion by Commissioner Atkins. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Scott. Any questions or discussion? See now, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Atkins? Yes. Commissioner Absher? <clears throat> yes. Judge Jones? Yes. Authorized payment of the expenditure approval list dated August 19th, 2024, plus any other utility bills received before we run checks, which will probably be Thursday. <coughs> We've got the air curtain is on here, which was 196000 that money is going to be reimbursed by grant money. We've already got that money. It's okay. part of that rec that composting grant. Okay, so we've already got the money on that. that. When the other is the 460 on asphalt, we'll be submitting for reimbursement on that one as well. I think over 300,000 is on Cole Saver. Okay. Let's see. Is there a motion to approve uh, payment of the expenditure approval list dated August 19, 2024, plus any other utility bills received before checks are run? Motion. Motion by Commissioner Atkins. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Scott. Any questions or discussion? Seeing that, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Yeah. Commissioner Atkins? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Commissioner Absher? Yes. Yeah. Judge Jones? Yes. That's all I had to All right. Thank you, sir.
Bobby, we need executive session today, or we'll take a look at it and see. Hey, Greg, here you go. Anybody got any questions or anything about these we need to take up in executive session? I know. <clears throat> okay. Um, Bobby, you okay with everything? Uh, you okay with this? Yeah. 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 Jim. Yeah. All right. Is, is my motion to acknowledge moving Randy L. Mullins as a temporary parks coordinator to a parks coordinator at 2H rate of pay effective 8224 to acknowledge moving Shane Fields uh, as a solid waste loader to a non-CDO driver, 3H rate of pay effective 81924 to move Bradley Lane from solid waste loader to a non-CDO driver, 3H rate of pay effective 81924 to move Austin Mounts solid waste uh, <coughs> non-CDO driver to a CDO driver to 4H rate of pay effective 81924 and to acknowledge the resignation of Billy D. Tackett, heavy equipment operator, effective 8 12 24. Uh, is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Scott. Any questions or discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Atkins? Yes. Commissioner Rapture? Yes. Judge Jones? Yes. Um, All right. Um, next thing is uh, anything, any of the department supervisors have anything? JJ, Paul, me, anybody have anything? Like come, uh, come on up. JJ. I'd like to mention that uh, there goes that early stuff. Test results tomorrow and what they can do and what they can't do. That's all the folks pray for. Absolutely. You tell Johnny we was asking about him and we'll, we'll absolutely remember him in our prayers, okay? And, and uh, I'd like to uh, remember uh, Ernest Clark's family. He passed away, and he's done a lot of exterminating stuff at the trial and stuff back a year or two ago, and remember that. Family. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Chuck, Stephanie, anybody have anything? Pam, Jimmy, uh, Jerry, anything on the trail system? Fabian, Bobby, <coughs> Roy, anybody think from the county attorney's yeah. office? Diane, Sherry, I miss anybody. Anybody have anything? Okay. Um, William, you have anything? No. All right. Um, Commissioner Atkins, you have anything, sir? No, Judge. The only thing, I've been getting some calls. Are we making any uh, headway with Greasy Creek Park? There have been a lot of people asking me, and I don't know what to tell them. Well, yeah, we're trying. Bobby is working on that. We talked about it yesterday. Um, we basically just need to decide whether we want to put a cabin back like we had or some type of metal building. Um, it would be my position that if you went in there and put a metal building up, I mean, you can, you know, put wind, I mean, I'm not talking about, I mean, you can make it yeah. nice. You yeah. Can, you know, rock on it. You can put brick on the front, whatever. But, you know, aluminum doesn't rot. You don't have to stain it. It's more resilient. Um, the um, long-term maintenance cost of a metal building type structure, it's not gonna be as attractive, but on the flip side of it, it's gonna be a lot cheaper to maintain and take care of. Um, I think you could build a bigger metal building 
that would probably, if you want to have something for community gatherings, birthday parties, wedding receptions, that you could build a metal building more economically and it would be bigger and oh, yeah. better laid out. And if you've got handy, you know, you've got elderly people, you have people with handicaps. If you had like a ground level building or something that you didn't have a lot of steps getting into, it's got to be ADA compliant. Yep. Um, I'm not sure if those centers were ADA compliant when they were built or not, but you know, we've got to make sure it's ADA compliant. Uh, it's going to have to have ramps. Uh, Paul, why don't you come up, Paul, come up for a second real quick. I know like with our metal building, the hitch used every weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and people love it. I mean, you've been in it. It's nice. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, that's one of the reasons when I, after looking at the building that you all built that I would be in favor of some kind of metal building. Bobby, what do you think? Metal? We could build a pretty nice building, I think. Yeah, would you, could. Paul, for, yeah. so, Paul, for the insurance you, coverage we've got? Paul, do you yeah. think we could build a metal building with the money we're going to have more economically that would be cheaper in long-term maintenance costs than? Def definitely would be a whole lot cheaper. To I mean, it. you know this, and I think you could say this. The cost that we're spending on maintaining <coughs> those log cabin buildings, you're going to avoid a lot of that. You're not going to have all the decking. You're not going to have all the staining, the wood that's got to be replaced. And, Judge, it, that's like ours on the heating cost. That building, what, we let them wrap it. You know, when they build a pole building, they wrapped it. Well, we went to Lowe's and got the blown-in insulation. It's three foot deep in the ceiling. That building's not hard. It's not hard on the power bill. I mean, it's something, you know, it's insulated well. It stays cool in the summer and warm in the winter. I mean... It's very economical the way we built that building. I mean, and serves a great purpose. You know, we didn't put windows in it because beside 460, somebody come up and bust a window out. But I mean, once you get open the doors, you see what we've got. It's very nice, you know. Yeah. We, so uh, is there a, uh, would there be a motion to put out an RFP for, um, a design build or a bid for a design build. I don't know how we go about doing that. We'd have to spec it out, size of it. We'd have to spec it out and design it. Have have a design too. Well, let's to do be it, I think. Let's go ahead and get a design as soon as we can. And once we get design, let the court members look at it. And if everybody's improving, then we'll put it out for a bid and see what kind of bids we can get. <clears throat> Everybody okay with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get the ball rolling for them, because you know I, I understand that was used, like you said, it's probably used more the, as much as any in this county. Because I know our workload at our fire department, we went, we always liked to. If you ran it, on, you wanted it on Saturday, you had it all day. It would be. I will make a motion that we hire Kevin Gillum at Summit. He's the architect to design, because you're gonna have to have plans. We need to make sure it's done right, mm -hmm. but let's have Kevin Gillen do us plans for a metal building that would suit the purposes, it would fit the lot, and get us a proposal. I'll make the motion to hire Kevin as their second. I'll say. Second by Commissioner Eck. Is all in favor? <laughs> Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Yeah. Commissioner Atkins? Yes. Commissioner Absher? Yes. Yeah. Judge Jones? Yes. I don't think it's going to cost a little bit of money, but we've hired Kevin before. I think that's that first step is just get the architect hired, get the plans. Once we get the plans, then we can put it out for bid. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Judge, I got a call this morning uh, about when they can start getting that walking track. They said that they couldn't use walking Is there, I mean, can Fabian come up? They just said that. We'll, we'll need to secure the the other property there where where the building was a little better and go ahead and fill that in then. We okay. need to fill before the before we can uh, open it. And I think uh, we could do that pretty quick. Quickly, I, I, I think. They, I think they just didn't want people in there with the building. You know, it was a safety factor with that open safety that, that open like foundation. a basement in under a building. Yeah, I think I don't think until that's done that we ought to 
open it back up because you don't want somebody falling in there and getting hurt. And, and I think the reason nobody had done that at this point was to wait and see, are we going to go back kind of like it was and could you possibly have concrete footer or not or maybe you're going to look well, a little I mean, different. The log cabin building looks better, but it's not as functional as what? Well, and you might be able to get a lot bigger building than what they had before, you know. Well, there's, I don't think there's any question you can yeah, build a bigger building. Yeah, that's what I'm saying with metal building. I think mm -hmm. they'd be satisfied without a bigger facility, you know, for the people. I, I know that uh, we went now to Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We're doing two part, you know, letting two parties a day. Always before, we just let the one party, if you wanted it on Saturday, you had from 8 o'clock to 12 o'clock at night to do, and we've been splitting it up trying to accommodate them people. And right now, I think even from now, well, from now to Christmas, there's not a Friday, Saturday, or Sunday open at our building at the Mouth of Marble. I mean, it's, we've, we've stepped up and helped the people, you know, and <coughs> helped them get, have some work, because there's, there was several families wanting Christmas over there, but was having Christmas and birthday parties, you know, and weddings and stuff. I don't think we've got a wedding planned, but we've got everything else from Thanksgiving Day to Christmas. Yeah, I, I got a call from Miss Moore up there about, it, about that. Uh, she said she always walked there, and she wanted to know when that be open back up. She said, I need to walk. She said, I'll get run over in a row. Yeah. <laughs> this morning. All right. Thank you all. Bob, you yes. can call Kevin and get him on board. All right. Commissioner Epsher, you have anything, sir? Everything's going well. They're working hard. The county workers work harder than people give them credit for. And I appreciate it. Absolutely. I agree. Commissioner Scott, you know? I just like to thank the workers. Seem like they're all doing a good job. And, and uh, Maybe we might get some black top here for a long time. Yeah, well, we're not going to pick up some of your hands so far this week. Uh, they said we might be able to pick up half a day today. We're going to have to get some bottles out there. Yeah, I know. I, I just got a lot of people's concerns, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, rightfully so, I'm concerned. But, I mean, you know, I don't know what it's going to be doing. I mean, it's going to be a little bit more than it's going to be. And what, I think what everybody's talking about is we've not been able to get the paving done we wanted to because the blacktop plant at Shelby Anna has most of the blacktop that they're producing is going on the new US 460. Is that correct, Bowman? Well, see, it's a, it's a whole different mix than what they write. It's going up Shelby, it's mixed on base. They've got 40 trucks in there and all of it, so if everything the plant can do, just the load that's going up there on that 460. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah and, we, and we can't get it until they get their get this special to so get the 460 done we're going to be really limited yeah i know they get a lot of calls over in potholes too you know what i'm saying I mean, but you just do what you can do i understand that if you can't you can't Well, be good. They did tell me that, there, that they may start running some Saturdays for us. So if they start running on Saturdays, we'll work on Saturdays and then play. Good deal. Thank you, sir. Can't patch potholes without blacktop. Can't, can <laughs> All right. Um, Some people say we can't catch them. We can't patch them with blacktop. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard those complaints, baby. <laughs> well, well, I've just got one road that, I mean, you know that that pothole. You could pour concrete in it. It, it ain't going to stop that from coming back. Well, unfortunately, that's just part of it. Yeah, yeah. When I mean, hitch right in a bend in a curve. The hauler runs. That pothole comes back. I don't care how many times you fill it up. It keeps coming back. We got to figure something out. Whatever. We've got it on a list to be blacktop. So me and Fabian will work on that. <laughs> All right. Um, the only thing I have is I want to just express my condolences to the Morley family. Uh, Jerry Morley Osborne, who was my seventh and eighth grade English teacher, Chuck's aunt, uh, passed away last week. And I was, I was shocked to hear it when Chuck called me and told me 
Um, uh, I grew up with her kids, Josh and Stephanie. I'm a little bit older than them. Uh, her late husband, Stanley, was, you know, grew up on Indian Creek where I grew up. Um, Jerry was just a wonderful teacher. She was a wonderful person, Chuck. And um, of all the teachers that I had growing up, I told Chuck this, when you walked in her classroom, the nonsense stopped. I mean, I knew what, you know, most of us knew what we could get away with. And when you went in Jerry's classroom, you knew you didn't get away with much. And, you know, when you're growing up, you don't always appreciate the teachers who are the hardest. But uh, when you get older and you've gone through law school and you've gone through college, you realize that some of the ones that sort of let you slide through weren't doing you a favor. Right. But she was a wonderful English teacher. And uh, we've got a, a thread from my high school class, uh, and there was a lot of people talking about she had us do a play. I can't remember if it was seventh or eighth grade. And people, now think about this. This is 40-some years later. Um, my high school classmates are still talking about the plays that we did in her class. And, you know, that's the kind of thing that, you know, you don't often, I can't remember what I did in, in you know, high school chemistry class, I'll tell you that much. I mean, you, but it was one of those things that made uh, an impression on the students. And uh, she helped me catch up on some problems I had in grammar and English. Um, and she cared. And she was a consummate educator. She loved it. She was made to be a school teacher, and um, it was just, I was shocked, Chuck, when you told me she had passed away. Um, just a dear friend, um, you know, a uh, long-term member of the Shelby Valley Church of Christ. Um, her son, Josh, is a Grammy Award-winning uh, songwriter in Nashville. He's written, I don't know how many number one songs now for... Um, for a, a lot of the main, uh, you know, you know the, the top tier country singers, and um, it's just it's a huge loss for our community. Um, and again, Chuck, I just want to express my condolences to you and the rest of the family, Mike, and and, and the rest of the family. All right. Uh, any other business to come before the court today? If not, then I'm going to ask Commissioner Absher if he would say the benediction for us, and then we will entertain a motion to adjourn. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, once again, we approach our throne of grace. Thank you, your Heavenly Father, for allowing us to be here today to take care of the business of the county. And, Lord, I ask for blessings upon those who have been mentioned here this day, who have passed on. Lord, I pray your blessings upon their families. Lord, I pray you will bless us and watch over us this day. Forgive us when we fail you. Go with us and guide us in everything that we do or say. Lord, we love you and we praise you. And it's in Jesus' name I pray and amen. Amen. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion. Motion by Commissioner Atkins. I'll make a second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Atkins? Yes. Commissioner Absher? Judge Johnson? Yes, we are adjourned.